Alright guys, so today we are going to be doing Cha-Ching number 38. Um, I have some things to talk about at the end of the video. Um, just some things that have been going on recently. Uh, but we're going to start in where we left off and that was at a Torrid Top. This sold for $22.99. You guys know I love picking up Torrid clothing. I feel like as far as clothing brands go, um, it tends to sell pretty decently and quickly at the same time. So that's obviously a plus plus when you find it. Um, this one here, I probably picked up at the thrift store on like 50% off day. Um, so I'd say maybe I spent two to three dollars on it. Uh, the next thing is some more of those inflatable bunny rabbits. Um, I had purchased a bunch of these as a lot on Facebook Marketplace for $9 for all of them. And this blue one here sold for $66, which is awesome. Um, I've sold every single one of those um, that I purchased. And there is currently one listed with two watchers, no bids yet. Um, but I, I have a feeling it will definitely sell because <laughs> all of the other ones did. Uh, next was a Dimensions cross stitch kit. This was a prayer quilt for baby that sold for $24.99 and I got that at a thrift store. I probably paid between $2 to $3 for it. Next was a Lily Pulitzer cardigan that sold for $18.99. But if you ever do find Lily Pulitzer um, items, it is a expensive brand. I come across it every now and then. I mean, it wasn't the first Lily Pulitzer um, piece I've ever found out in the wild while yard selling and thrifting. But it's definitely also, I think, I, a brand I don't find super frequently in my area. Uh, next was a lot of R.L. Stein Goosebumps books. I purchased these books, um, it was a box full of them at a yard sale for $5 for the whole box. And I sold those for $39.99. So that's really awesome. People are definitely uh, wanting to recollect their Goosebumps books that they had when they were younger or to buy for, you know, their children now to enjoy. Um, so as far as Goosebumps books go, they will sell individually. I do have one I sold individually from this lot that was a double that I listed separately, but that's not in this Chiching. Um, but however, the more you have as a lot, the better I think um, they will do. There might be, you know, I would go through each one just to make sure there's not like one specifically that might be worth um, way more than another. I, I don't know if I actually did that now, now that I'm thinking about it. I don't know if I went and like looked up every single one. Um, so I'm not quite sure if maybe one of them would have been a little more valuable than others, but even the ones that I got did have, um, you know, they were read by kids. So, you know, some of the covers on them were in like the best condition and that kind of thing, but that doesn't always matter, um, to people who just want to read the stories. Next was a vintage dress. This was by a company called Circle T and that sold for $29.99. It was corduroy, floral, kind of had like a Victorian-esque look to it um, in my opinion. And definitely I think vintage dresses do well. We all know um, Gunny Sacks is a good um, vintage dress brand to buy, but definitely I would consider picking up any kind of vintage dresses that are just really unique looking. And this one, I put the term cottage core in the title. That is becoming like a super popular uh, type of trend. Um, so definitely use that to describe things. Um, definitely, you know, things that are floral along with the shabby chic type of look, really. Um, I am planning on doing a eBay related video of 
um, the top five mistakes that resellers make. And um, I am going to do a video and like discuss some things. So definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm excited to film that. Um, next was a, this again was an older, I described it as a Mew Mew, if that's how you, is it Mew Mew or Mew Mew? I'm, I'm unsure exactly how to pronounce those, but just those um long, like, nightgown slash just casual dresses. This was by a company called Jaylin and that sold for $16.99. I'll have to go to my next page here. Uh, next we have a just a little set of soap. I sold one of these before. They're by a company called Biggs and Featherbell and this one was a set of lavender scented soaps. It sold for $10.99 and I only paid a dollar for it at a yard sale. I sold a Cardinal Spoon Rest. This actually came from um, it's been a long time since I purchased a mystery box on eBay, but one of the last mystery boxes I purchased on eBay, this was probably like the best thing that came out of it, um, cause it was new, a new spoon rest with a cardinal on, that sold for $15.99. I sold a set of t vintage Tupperware measuring spoons for $26.99. I I like picking up vintage Tupperware. I am a little picky with it. I guess maybe I should stop not being as picky with it as I am, but I am the first to admit that I am picky when it comes to vintage Tupperware. I prefer um, like the measuring spoons, the measuring cups, um, the uh, pour spout batter uh, bowls and things like that. Um, as far as like the the just regular canisters and bowls with lids and things of that nature, um, I just want them to be in like really good condition, uh, free of like scratches on the insides and the outsides and stuff like that. So it's something I got I got to get over because I think regardless the, they will probably sell. Uh, next was that little purple heart choker necklace. Um, I just recently, I threw it in my bag at a fill a bag rummage sale and I already made my money back off of um, the bags that I purchased at the rummage sale. So, I mean, that really didn't cost anything. I had just pretty much just threw it in my bag. I didn't think it was really worth much. It sold for $5.99 and I just took it because it just reminded me of being a teenager. Um, we sold another set of the vintage Newport matches. We still have quite a number of those left. Those sold for $11.99. And in my listing, it is for a set of two. So you get two books of the matches. They've been selling really well. So that's exciting. If you ever come across like brand new old stock vintage matches, definitely um, pick them up, especially if they're of a, you know, what like what's the word I'm looking for, like a name brand type of advertising, if you if you know what I'm saying. So definitely the Newport matches were doing well. When Eric bought these at a yard sale, um, I think he paid $2 for the box of them, and there was a bunch in the box. He also had gotten some that was like a bank, and none of those have sold yet. So, um, you know, it being a more well-known brand, I think is helping a lot better. I sold that yellow trash can cookie jar. I thought this thing was so unique. It just looked like a dented up, like garbage trash can, but it was a cookie jar that sold for $19.99. And I got that at um, Goodwill. I can't remember what I paid for it now. I feel like maybe $3.99 at the most. Uh, next was a just gold, looking gold toned looking choker necklace this sold for five dollars and 99 cents i got this out of a bag at one point over this summer was it last year or the year before i can't remember i had purchased um just this random bag of mixed jewelry at a yard sale for a dollar and i still have a lot of jewelry from those bags that i have to i have to list and that just came from it so even if I sell every piece of jewelry that came out of that bag, I only paid a dollar for. If I sold every piece 
at $5.99, I'd be just as happy. So I do need to get the rest of that listed. I sold another Torrid shirt, this one for $25.99. Uh, let's see, next was those Vans. I got these Vans at the last rummage sale um, that I went to. And those sold for $32.99. I took the time. They weren't really dirty by any means, but I took the time to really clean them up. Um, the white bit along the sole, one of my favorite things to use to kind of whiten and brighten up um, white soles on shoes is Shout. Just a little like spray bottle of Shout, put it on a rag and just elbow grease it and get it nice it gets it nice clean and white again um next was a walita body lotion this um the person actually purchased both of them um so that was $19.98 eric got these at his work i think he paid a dollar a piece for those I sold a Kangol rabbit fur hat for $25.99 and I got that at a thrift store. I probably paid about $2 for it. I sold a nine piece makeup lot. These were all just lip products, um, obviously not used. Those sold for $16.99. It was just stuff from my own personal collection that I just didn't want anymore. Which I always say, like, especially if you're first starting out reselling, whether you're reselling on eBay or Poshmark or Macari or Facebook Marketplace, wherever um, you resell, going shopping around your house is just a great way to gather inventory. Just go around your house, find the things that you don't want anymore, that you don't need anymore. You're like, okay, I'm ready to sell this. Like, right there is free inventory. I mean, it might not have been technically free to begin with, but at that point in time, if you are just looking to, you know, get rid of it, it is essentially free inventory. Um, oh, these next two are fun. So you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, I won a box of jewelry at an auction for $22.50, and there were two tiffany pieces in the box and i just could not believe why nobody was really interested in bidding against me on this box that had the tiffany jewelry in well both pieces sold so the first piece was a tiffany and company bean necklace by elsa peretti i put this up on auction and it sold for a hundred and seventy dollars which is so awesome. And the next one was the Tiffany bracelet by Paloma Picasso. Again, I put this up on auction and it sold for $417.50. So that was an amazing auction score that I only paid $22.50 for the entire box. And I even sold other stuff out of that box as well. So, oh my gosh, like that's just amazing. That's probably like my best profit in a very, very, very long time. So I'm really happy about that. <laughs> uh, okay, next was another inflatable pink bunny rabbit. This one sold for $41. So if you see these things, pick them up. Um... I definitely think it helps too that Easter is coming typically with um, holiday items regardless of what time of year I'm in. I still I still like to get the things listed but I think it did help that you know I listed these closer to Easter. Um, next was a dress barn purple top that sold for $14.99. And this came out of one of those garbage bags full of clothes I got off Facebook Marketplace. I still have clothes from those bags that need to be listed. I do have a lot listed, but there's still plenty more that needs to be listed. I'm, I'm getting through them. I really am. Uh, next was a cardigan by a company called Knox Rose that sold for $15.99. And this I'm pretty sure it came from a fill-a-bag rummage sale. 
Next thing was this wood carved antelope figure. I got this at a yard sale. I probably paid 50 cents to a dollar for it. I thought it was really unique and interesting. It sold for $11.99. I sold a cosmetics powder by a company called Hissy Fit Cosmetics that sold for, where am I? I lost, I lost my place here, $7.99. And that, that was new. Um, again, it belonged, it was in my collection. I had two of them. Um, and this originally came from a discount store. I think I got it for 99 cents. And this was a while, a while back. Um, next was, why do I have that down twice, guys? Hold up. I am so confused. I am so confused. Oh. Oh my gosh. I sold like two, technically two yellow trash cans and I got so confused. So that one um earlier the one earlier wasn't the cookie jar it was a just plastic vintage trash can like you'd put in like a bathroom that sold for $19.99 I apologize because I came upon the next one which is the trash can cookie jar <laughs> so this was the um dented looking trash can cookie jar that actually sold for $25.99 the plastic trash can um I think I got that at um the thrift store for like 99 cents okay goodness gracious I just got myself all mixed up there all right on to the next we have a set of four Ray Dunn appetizer plates those sold for $27.99 Eric and I purchased these at Goodwill um it was a set of eight but we lotted them out in a set sets of four so we sold a set of four a long time ago these these next four that sold recently um we had been sitting on for a little while. So the first sets went quick, second sets um, not as quickly. And I think we paid about, I'd say maybe $4.99 for the box of eight originally. I sold a older Are You Afraid of the Dark VHS tape. Do you guys remember the show? I loved the show on Nickelodeon. It was one of my faves. Um, that sold for $19.99. I actually purchased this on eBay myself like ages ago. This was back when I was young and still living with my parents. Um, it's been a long time and I just had it kind of like in my collection <laughs> since then. Um, that actually sold very, very quickly. Like shortly after I listed it, it sold. Um, and I priced it like, you know, competitively with all of the other ones. So I don't feel like I... I priced it, um, you know, too low or anything like that. It just sold super quick. Same with this next thing. This was a vintage handmade um, woven kind of basket that was made out of old greeting cards. I picked this up at a yard sale. I just thought it was really cute and unique. It was handmade. I paid 25 cents for it and it sold for $12.99. And again, that went super quick. Um, it seemed like other, um, other ones of these, like more or less the Christmas themed ones, I feel like sold better. Um, the one that I had, it wasn't necessarily a, a theme to it. It was kind of Eastery, but you know, there was other, other images mixed in. Still really cute though, and sold super quick. Uh, next was that Cracker Barrel Top that sold for $17.99 and this was um, the top that kind of created uh, my last video when I discussed RN numbers. So if you did not see that video, definitely check it out. If I said RN number and you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to, you'll have to look at that video. Uh, next was a men's cologne. This was by a company called Observe Lay Essence. That sold for $29.99. That sold super quick as well. Um, I paid $2 for it at a yard sale. And the last thing for this cha-ching was a sack 
purse that sold for $27 and um, this came from the last rummage sale that I had gone to. So that brings me to um, just some things that I want to discuss, things that have um, come up or things that are just happening lately as far as eBay goes. I feel like we're currently in another shipping delay scenario and I think a lot of that has to do with um, a lot of the U.S. getting different snowstorms everywhere. I know Texas was hit pretty dang hard. Um, if any of you guys are are in Texas, um, I hope that everything has been, you know, okay with you. Um, my heart goes out to the people in Texas, man. Like, oh my gosh, just like some of the videos I was seeing of like pipes bursting and everything like that because of the cold and the, the freeze, like, um, freezing the pipes and then bursting and everything like that. It is so devastating. Um, we got some snow here, but, you know, I live in Pennsylvania, and um, it's it's more of a nuisance than anything when it snows here. It's not, not like a crippling type of scenario, but it does, you know, um, when it comes to shipping things out and having, you know, delays because airplanes and uh, trucks and everything else it kind of just culminates into uh you know delays in shipping and things like that so that's not anything that we have control over we don't have control over the weather um but i have been noticing a little bit of delays again in shipping and i feel like it's because you know of the snowstorms that everyone has been getting um do you have to let me know down in the comments if if you feel like you've been seeing any shipping delays, maybe it's just on my end. I'm not sure, but I feel like, I feel like there are some. Uh, okay, so you guys, if you watched my last Chin Chang, you know I had sold one of those bunny rabbits for, the bid ended at $230.50. And I had told you that the person who purchased it, um, pretty much waited until they won the auction and then messaged me telling me that they couldn't pay for it. So I had to cancel the sale and relist the item, which sucks because it's a waste of my time to do that. Like they could have messaged me before the auction ever ended so I could delete their bid, um, which I have no problem doing. And I think, yeah, that just happened yesterday. Someone wanted a bid deleted and I don't mind. Like there's no problem with that. Just as long as, you know, you know about it before the auction ends. So they didn't pay. Um, so they were bidding on other of my bunnies but you know didn't say anything about not being able to pay and I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because they did win some of my other bunnies and did pay so I didn't want to um you know not accept their bids because you, you know yes they wanted to cancel the one but they paid for the others so giving the benefit of the doubt well they had won another one of my auctions for another rabbit. Um, I can't remember how much it was for, but I'll post a picture of it. Uh, again, after the auction ended, they sent a message saying that they couldn't pay right away, um, but that they'd pay by, I don't even know when it was. Now, I have it set up on my eBay that eBay automatically opens unpaid item cases. Um, so if you don't pay within the allotted time, just eBay opens it up. I don't do anything on my end. They open up the case. So at this point, I was kind of just like, I'm over this buyer. I am so over this buyer giving me the runaround. Um, prior to this, they left me two pot like they won three of my bunnies so two positive feedbacks on two of the bunnies one of the feedbacks was a neutral <sighs> okay <laughs> bear with me you guys this this person oh my gosh okay sometimes you you 
come across these people. They're just a little crazy. So this is what the neutral feedback stated. It said, it was a lovely bunny until it gone too soon and I'm the one to blame. I have no idea what that meant. Um, obviously, I'm not to blame. They're to blame. I don't know what they did to it or what happened to it. If something did happen to it, I have no idea. But I was perturbed <laughs> at the fact that they left a neutral feedback. So then they're telling me that they're not being able to pay for this other bunny until someday because they have a problem like and they were sending me messages like they have some sort of problem where they're buying stuff on ebay way before they get paid for the week and spending their money and they don't have any money to pay for the items that they buy which is a problem like it's it, that's seriously an addiction of shopping um, so I was just really like kind of done at that point. So eBay opens the case. They get, they send me a message saying like, oh, I thought, you know, you were going to wait until I got paid and blah, blah, blah. And it's like one, like I said, I have eBay set up to just automatically open the whatchamacallits. Like you have a set time to pay. And if you don't pay in that set time, there's really nothing I can do about it. Like you need to be more responsible with your money that you have or you don't have kind of thing. Like I am pretty, pretty nice about everything. I was really nice to this person and you know, really accommodating to them the entire time, even after all of the other bull crap that they kind of put me through. <laughs> um, so, you know, e I just relisted the item eBay, you know, obviously closed the case on them for not paying. I blocked them from ever buying any more of my stuff. I don't want to deal with it. And I think in the long run, I'm helping them because they have a shopping addiction and they should not be buying stuff they cannot pay for. And I almost feel kind of bad that they spent so much money on these rabbits when, you know, they probably should have been spending their money on something else if they really didn't have the money till they got, got paid kind of thing. So that happened. All of that <laughs> happened. So yes, if you guys ever come across someone similar to that, um, you can block people from bidding on, on your stuff. Um, so it just, it sucks to, to come to that point. I hate doing it. It's not something I enjoy doing by any means, but I just, I was just fed up at that point. So I did end up getting the neutral feedback removed and while I was at it um, a while back I had gotten a negative from a shirt that um, I had gotten returned to me and I gave the person a full refund um, and they still left me a negative and that kind of was like eating at me too so <laughs> I um, contacted eBay for business on Facebook and they removed both that negative as well as this crazy bunny neutral <laughs> feedback that was left. Um, so that's really awesome that they removed those feedbacks for me. Um, but yeah, just, oh my goodness. Even can be a little crazy sometimes um, dealing with some people, but you know, it's all part part of what goes on, you know, and that's why I like kind of discussing at the end of my chichings, just like the random things that go on um, kind of thing. So yeah, that's everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know what you thought down below. And if, if you ever had a crazy buyer, share your stories down in the comments. But that is everything. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.